Now, once we have that service put together, remember that anything can host a service. Basically, any app domain will do, right? So you could build your own custom Windows program that exposes services. You could build a Windows service which exposes WCF services. You could host it inside of IIS, right? You could go ahead and use this Vista specific activation service. If you're going to roll your own host, there's just really a couple lines of code you have to use to use the service host to expose the service from your specified endpoint. Really, it's like two lines of code, right? And then you're done. The host is now running, waiting for input. And then the consumer of the service, again, can be anything whatsoever. If you're using a web service binding, you know, then I'm really talking whatever you want, right? Because that's one of the big benefits of web services is that it's a very neutral, open-ended technology, right? Because everything has kind of been relegated to TCP or to uh, HTTP and XML. Now, just like web services, we have lots of designer support. So when you're trying to build your actual application to communicate with the service, we can just generate client-side proxies. Just right-click and say add service reference, and it will generate all the proxy code for you, and it will generate the config file for you. Okay. So let me just show you a quick little demo here, and that will bring us right to about the end of the first session. And then during the break, I'll certainly field any questions you might have. Now, one of the weird things about WCF is that it seems like no matter where you look, you find a project template for it. <laughs> it's like shoved everywhere. So it's a little bit confusing. So why don't I go ahead and begin there. Now, let's say that you know you want to build a WCF service that will indeed make use of a web service binding. Because you know it has to be used by as many operating systems as possible, as many callers as possible. Well, you will eventually then have to host your DLL in an IIS virtual directory, much like a web service. Okay? So if you know that's what you want from the get-go, you can say file new website. And now we can make use of the WCF service project type. And this basically is going to look and feel very much like building a normal web service we just use different attributes. So the benefit of this project workspace is only that it will make the virtual directory for you automatically. Right? That's the only benefit. You can certainly just make a normal DLL and make your own virtual directory. That's just fine. Okay? So I typically don't use this. I go just under File, New, Project. And there's an area under your language of choice called WCF. Remember now, this is 2008, right? And we have a lot of different library types. This is the one you'll probably want to use most often, just a WCF service library. There's only one major benefit for using this project template as opposed to a normal class library project, because all the code it gives you on startup, you're going to delete it anyway, <laughs> okay? The only benefit of this particular project type is it's automatically set up to work with a test client. Okay, a really easy to use test client. So you can just run the service and it will pop up a test client and you can invoke all the methods. Kind of like a web service. Okay. These other guys here too, that would be for workflow services. And we'll talk about that in the next session. Right? So I'm just going to load up a project that I already have here just to kind of show you what could be done. And why don't we first look at the library. Remember we said a WC application, you know, three assemblies all kind of working together, the library, the host, and then the client. So we're going to look at the library first. And again, absolutely nothing very fancy here whatsoever. Only thing I want to point out is notice when I've defined my contract, that's the C, right? I made use of the WCF specific attributes. When I've implemented my contract, notice I didn't have to do anything special at all. 
Now, I put in an artificial call to uh, thread.sleep here because my client is going to go ahead and communicate with the service asynchronously. So I wanted to inject an artificial leg, right, just to make it pretend it's taken a long time. Right? And that's it. That's all the code we have for this library. But here's the cool part now. If I were to run my DLL, which of course you can't truly do, watch what's going to pop up here. And this is also new as of the beta 2s. So if you've already been doing some beta 1 stuff, you might want to get the refresh. Okay, look at what I can now do. Right? I can now invoke the members of that particular service. Now the reason, again, it's taking a long time. Remember I put in that artificial leg. So don't worry, the tool's not really that slow. <laughs> okay. Well, you might wonder, how did it do that? How did it know to go to this particular address? I just made an artificial address of 8080 for my port. Well, it did so because when you built that WCF service library, it also gave you an app config file, which again can seem very strange since I'm building a DLL, but that little test client is reading that data to figure out the ABCs. And another cool thing about this project workspace type, you can just go ahead and copy and paste that into your actual real host, right, as a starting point. A couple of other cool things too, for any application using the WCF assemblies, if you have an app config file, you can just right click on top of it and open up this wonderful little configuration editor, right? You know. Um, Working with XML is not the funnest thing in the world. Lots of typos you can easily get in there. Incorrect capitalization, bad spelling. You know, I'm not a good speller anyway. So here, if you have a client config file or a server config file, you can just use this nice little front end tool. And this will update those config files with oodles of settings. Right? So that's another cool thing too. So we got the test client, and we got this config file editor. And both of those things can be run outside of Visual Studio, right? You can just run them from the command prompt as well. You don't have to have Visual Studio. Those are just part of the 3.5 SDK. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the library, but we gotta look at the host and the client yet, okay? Now, real quick, any questions on what this service library did? Yeah. <laughs> 